The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The angel Gabriel was sent from God to a town of Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man named Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming to her, he said, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at what was said and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. Then the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of David his father, and he will rule over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom, there will be no end. But Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I have no relations with a man? And the angel said to her in reply, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month for who, her, who was called barren. For nothing will be impossible for God. Mary said, Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come, Holy Spirit, come by the most powerful means of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, your well-beloved spouse. Today we celebrate the Feast of the Solemnity of the Annunciation. And it's important to us to realize that the Annunciation, once again, is a spiritual solution to a human problem. Mary says to the angel, how can this me be because I do not know man? And the angel came forth and said, you will be overpowered by the grace of the Holy Spirit and overshadowed by the power of the Most High and your child will be called holy. Giving that solution to the problem, we see that theme running throughout Scripture that we ought to expect supernatural grace, supernatural solutions to human problems. But yet, we try to pull our bootstraps up, tighten our belt, and do those problems ourselves. It's important also to realize that God's plan of salvation starts at this very moment. He used the prophets, as we heard in the the Testament, in the Old Testament today, that there would be a son, there would be a baby born of a virgin. So the plan of salvation was in place, but the action of salvation takes place in this little town of Bethlehem to this young woman. And it is her faith that has saved us to allow us that God has come through humanity, come through the flesh and revealed itself in the way that it did. Mary's own words gives us a disposition of surrender. Behold, I am the handmaid of the Lord. May it be done to me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. If we think about our own life, and if in those hard times we would have surrendered to the Lord, if we would have surrendered to prayer, if we would have surrendered and waited on the Lord, a lot of the mistakes that we made in the past would not have been there. Sometimes it's financial, sometimes it's relationships, sometimes in, in the humanness who we are, we, we move on emotion before those emotions clear. And sometimes we make mistakes. This is why Christ died on the cross. He knows human nature. He understands what we go through. But what we have to realize is that emotion is used most often by Satan to trap us. 
We get emotional about certain things and then we get angry or frustrated or fearful or any of those emotions that we feel and then Satan brings a temptation and he tries to get us to fall. We, as people, have to go into sacrifice once again. As it talks about in the Old Testament today, it says God is not looking for sacrifice but he's looking for mercy, right? But the thing is, is we cannot get to mercy unless we go through the small sacrifices of life to tame our emotions to the point where we can hear God, that we can feel his grace and his love guiding us. But if our emotions are out of control, then everything guides us. If you look at the state of the world today, we are in a state of emotionalism. People are upset about everything. If you take somebody's parking spot, you're probably going to get in a fist fight at Walmart. I mean, that's just how people are. They're upset and they're angry and they can't get out of the emotions of today. So what happens is we sin against our fellow man. We don't look at something trivial like a parking spot or somebody cutting us off in traffic as a big deal. But why are we getting so emotional about it? If we do not train ourselves, if we don't ask God to temper our emotions, to give us that grace and emotion, then we are going to make mistakes and we are going to hurt the people around us. And we leave a footprint of anger and resentment and hurtfulness to our family, our friends, and our people in our circle of influence. But if we control those very things, If we use our emotions as a guide to trigger prayer, we will always have the Spirit running through us. We will be true handmaids of God, allowing His grace and His love and His peace to overcome us like Mary in the Annunciation. We will allow those things to come in because we have tempered our emotion. And what does emotion bring but blindness? God wants us to see. He wants us to see with the eye of our heart, of our mind, of our very spirit. But the thing that blinds those things are the emotionalism of today. So detach yourself. Don't be caught up in these things that are in the world. God says to live in the world, but not of it. And subscribing to the emotionalism today, we live of the world detaching ourselves from that emotion and praying during the emotional times of our life, what it gives us is it gives us insight and divine grace to move forward and to look for the signs of God to follow. And those things that we can do to get out of emotion is allow those things that trigger us when we start to feel ourselves get angry or frustrated is to simple, say a, a simple prayer. The, one, the prayer I say is, I praise you, Lord Jesus, and I thank you. Because your holy cross, you have redeemed the world. And I calm down. I would have yelled at a lot of you, but I calm myself down. I'm just teasing. The point is this. Use God because he gave us his name and friendship. And he knows the human condition. So when we use God to center ourselves our emotional plight, our heart, our mind, we have a clear head to move forward in his will. And that's ultimately the goal, is to live our lives according to God's will.